welcome back to our Christmas episode of Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. Now today we're going to be doing something that I've been wanting to do for a long time because I've got a feeling that this is going to be a potentially controversial one. I thought originally Christmas time we'd do a video on say the FireArc HW80K that you can see here and sort of just talk a bit about the history of it and just simply go over how the gun got its amazing reputation of being a seriously rugged dependable workhorse. But then I thought to myself that not everybody gets, shall we, shall we say, the shiniest toys at Christmas time. And sometimes the budget guys do tend to get looked over just a little bit. So I thought we'd then do the XS19 Super Grade instead. But then I thought, you know what would be the best fun? Would be if we compared both of them and did one of our shootouts with the 80 versus the XS19. Because there's a bit of a saying that goes around in the air gun community. And they say that you can buy a budget gun but it'll never shoot as well as an expensive gun. But to my knowledge, I've not actually seen any real in-depth testing between two sort of guns of these sort of uh, classes, say the budget option. For instance, you've got the XS19 here that max SRP, I believe, is around £159, £160. And you've got the HW80K, which you can find around 400 quid, depending on who you're uh, looking at. So I thought, do you know what? There's a huge gap here, but why don't we see how David does against Goliath? and compare the guns when it comes to, as always, their features, handling, consistency through the chrono, and then finally accuracy, and let's see if that price gap really does show that you get what you pay for, or if there's more than meets the eye when it comes to the more honest budget offerings on the market. So, let's get to it and compare the features of the HW80 against the XS19, and let's let the 80 go first. So then, features, and as mentioned, we are starting with the HW80K. Now at the rear of the gun, you can see we've got a rather nicely finished rubber butt pad that if anything could do with a slight clean if you take a look at it. Uh, but it has got some rather nice striping going through there to give a little bit extra traction when you're out shooting in, say, worse conditions. The gun also has a Monte Carlo style cheek piece, which although you can see it's the cheek piece itself protrudes slightly on the left hand side, on the right hand side it is mainly flat. To be fair, a left handed shooter could still use the gun but it is more designed primarily for right-handed shooters. Moving slightly further along, we have the famous Virarc automatic safety, which we'll talk a bit more about when it comes to the handling section. And down here, we have the record two-stage adjustable unit, which needs pretty much no introduction, if we're being honest with each other. It is a lovely bit of kit, but we'll talk a bit more about that a bit later on. One thing I will mention is the trigger guard here is not standard. Um, the shaping in such itself is standard, but this is brass, whereas the standard one is your normal, say, blued or, or slightly greyed out trigger guard. So this one has been pimped up ever so slightly. Honestly, don't know if I like it or not. If that suits it, I am not sure at all. You've also got a really nice bit of checkering here. And on this particular model, I love the way you can see the grain is sort of going through the checkering and making that really beautiful, beautiful pattern in the grip. I do like that. Slightly further along, you can see here, there's nothing on the forestock, but she is, as I'm sure you could tell, a brake barrel rifle. And it must be said, the lockup on these 80s is absolutely rock solid. You can see it there. And this HW80K comes with the Virarc silencer as standard. Now, the gun itself, for a spring gun, it is kitted out very well. But the main thing with the HW80s is the fact that they are, they have a reputation for being bomb-proof, we'll put it that way. And again, if we just show you the lock-up and around the breech area here, you can see it is a serious, a solid lump of metal. So features-wise for the HW80, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. It's what you'd expect from a German spring gun. Exceptionally solid, well-made, and uh, well, we'll see what our little SMK can do in comparison to this. So let's get the SMK XS19 out and let's see how things are going on the budget end of the spectrum. So then, next up for features, we're looking at the XS19 Supergrade. So as always, as with the Virarc, we start off at the rear of the gun. And it's pretty much the same affair here. Pretty much identical uh, rubber butt pad on the rear here with the same sort of striping going through to give you a little bit more traction. The XS19 Supergrade is also a Monte Carlo style stock with the cheek piece being on the left hand side here for right handed shooters and the right side being smooth. So again, as with the Virarc, a lefty could definitely shoot one of these but you may not have quite so much comfort as what you would do with the Virarc. The other thing worth mentioning here is that the cheek piece itself you can see isn't quite so pronounced as what you'll get on the Virarc offering. So maybe there's a sign of the, uh, the cost difference a little bit we can see already right there. Moving slightly further along, things get a little bit different. And you've got a um, manual safety with the toggle just in front of the trigger here. And the SMK also comes with a two-stage adjustable unit. But again, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the handling section. 
As you can see here, the bluing, to be fair, for a budget option, is genuinely quite nice. I mean, it looks like this one's straight out the box, so it could do with maybe an oily rag just being put through it, but to be fair, it's, it's pretty damn good. I wouldn't have any complaints about it, I'll put it that way. And as you can see, you've got your dovetail rail on top, like pretty much every modern brake barrel on the market, so you can attach a scope and such like that. Now, unlike the HW80K, you do get a proper set of sights on top of the gun. If you wanted to simply, you didn't want to fi fix a scope on top of there, you want to do some close range um, tin can blasting, or if you want to blast some rats, you have got the capability to do so without having to buy anything. Now granted, most Virarcs, there's a model for everything, you can definitely get HW80 with standard sights. But again, it's a nice little quirk and little feature for the XS19 to have over the Virarc that we have today. Now, the lockup on this is a little bit more traditional, shall we say, compared to the Virarc. Hopefully you can see that there. It's not quite as chunky as what you can see on the HW80, but again, it's pretty good. There's, it's not like some of the gamos out there where you've got a plastic breech. With this thing, you have got an all-metal breech. And overall, the workmanship on this is not too bad at all. As you can see, obviously, this is also a brake barrel rifle, very much like the HW80K. And you can see on the, uh, the end here, we've got our hooded sight. And in general, for the money, again, you're looking around £150 at max price. It's a good little package. The stock's a little bit bright compared to the Virarc, and you've got no checkering in the grip area here. But could this be a case of the Nova Vista that we reviewed earlier, where money's been saved in certain areas, but it's been spent in all the right places? Well, let's find out. But first, as always, we need to see what these things weigh. No point in buying a gun if it weighs two tonnes and you can't carry it anywhere with you. So let's get the scales out and we'll put the... Let's do the HW80 again first. Let's put the Virarc in there. Then after that, we'll do the XS19. So let's get the scales out. Okay then, we've got Fat Boy on the scales here now. And as you can see, it's doing 8.46 pounds when it comes to weight. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that when it comes to actual recoiling air guns, weight is not necessarily a bad thing. Yes, it's more that you have to lumber around if you're going shooting around the fields and things like that. But at the same time, it can also help to dim and, or, or dumb down some of the recoil, or dampen it just a little bit. So it's not necessarily always a detriment to the rifle, as we said, if it's a recoiling rifle. So let's now get the SMK out and let's see how that does in comparison. Okay then, so we've got our little Chinese friend all rigged up on the scales and she comes out at 6.62 pounds. So, Definitely a bit of a less of a lard ass compared to the HW80 that we looked at just a second ago. But as mentioned, that can also be a pro but also a con at the same time, all depending on how the gun shoots. So with that, why don't we move on to the handling section of this review? We'll chuck a scope on top and see exactly how these guns feel when they're put to the shoulder. Let's start with hmm, let's go Virarc again, so as we actually have a benchmark and see how close this can get to it. So let's go with the Virarc HW80. So then, the legendary HW80K, what do we think of this? Well, it's definitely a very solid feeling unit when it's in your hands, I'll put it that way. But let's actually check the balance out on this. Now we've got a Discovery VTR 3 to 12 by 42 on top here. And you can see here, balance is pretty much spot on where you want it to be. It's almost dead center of the gun. In fact, it pretty much, there's very little of my hand is touching this gun at the moment. It's pretty much the index finger and the middle finger. And it is pretty much bang on dead center you cannot complain about that and as we always say balance will mitigate weight and that is definitely the case with this gun here the gun's not light but it's solid i'll put it that way so now let's take a look at cocking effort because a carbine will usually mean you're going to be struggling a bit more to cock it and to be honest i don't know what german wizardry they've got going on in there but that was absolutely smooth as silk there we go got a pellet in there now Returning it, there's a little bit of resistance until it finally rests into the breech there. You might have seen that clunk, but to be fair, I like that. That is nice and solid feeling. And you can see here, left-hand side of the gun, you've got the push-button safety is engaged. Now, I, I don't recommend necessarily doing this with a 97, but you can do it with the brake barrel Virox. You can, say you're out hunting and your prey escapes and you want to make the gun safe again, you can re-engage the safety by breaking the barrel down and re-cocking it again. Um, I don't recommend doing that on the underlever rifles for the simple fact that I do that with my um, 97, and for the next few shots, it is smoking like a chimney. Whether it's bringing forwards uh, is dragging up grease a second time, I don't know, but it's just my experience. With the spring guns, the uh, brake barrels, sorry, I've yet to have a single issue with that. So, switch the safety off, and let's have a go 
the caps are obviously closed on here, let's be fair. The scope is not zeroed into this gun, and on top of that, we're using Milro Selects for this section here, so uh, it's probably not going to hit the target anyway. So, let's just uh, have a rough aim at the uh, pile over there and feel for the trigger. The second stage there is quite solid, you can see me bouncing off of it, hopefully. Let's give it a squeeze. They are sweet. <laughs> the record unit, make no mistake, there are a few no uh, Virarch naysayers out there, but even they will not really pick on the record trigger. That is absolutely superb, it really is. Let's give that another go. So you can see there's a, it's a tiny little bit of resistance when you break it down, but it's nothing, really. A lot of um, brake barrels these days, you even need to give it a tap, whereas with this, you can see, you just put your hand on the end and down she comes. Return it back up. Again, if you do it a bit quicker, you can't see there's that clunk motion, but yeah, it's just a thing you get used to, if we're being honest. So let's give this another squeeze. Again, you can see me now, I've hit the second stage. You see there, the, the trigger is resetting perfectly. And let's give it another squeeze. That is very, very nice. The only thing I would put against this, and it's not an 80 thing, it is just, it's an all-round Springer thing, and but it is definitely a Virarch thing. Virarchs are very twangy, unless you modify them. This one is completely standard, other than a little bit of uh, pimping, shall we say, here. The gun is completely standard, and you do definitely get that Virarch twong when you pull the trigger. You can hit, you can tell a Virarch against any other spring gun. If I just, uh, I'll stop talking now, and I'll bring the gun closer to the camera so you can actually have a listen to what the gun's like. There we go, so if I take aim now. So if you listen for that twang, don't know if you got that or not, but there's a definite twunk in the gun. And again, that might put some shooters off, but to be honest with you, it's part and parcel of playing with the spring gun, really, isn't it? It's, if you don't like that, we'll go back to PCPs. I don't mind a little bit of twang with my gun. So uh, the other thing we're just going to talk about as well is that checkering. And the reason why I'm making, putting extra emphasis into this is because some of the cheaper guns we've reviewed, we have said, yes, the gun has checkering, but you can't necessarily feel it so much. With this, you really can. And like we said earlier, you can see there's that beautiful pattern where the grain is going through the checkering as well. And you can definitely feel that. It doesn't only just feel very nice to touch, but you can definitely guarantee that when you're shooting this, say, winter time, like what we've got now with my stupid hat on, it's gonna give you that traction that you need. A little bit up the front would have been nice considering the cost of the gun, but at the end of the day, you can't really knock it too much for that. So overall, I've got very little to complain about with the HW80. If you was hoping I was gonna tear this apart, I'm afraid uh, I've let you down. So. Let's get the XS19 Super Grade out, and let's see just how close our David does get to the Goliath. Let's get the Super Grade. Right then, so, the XS19 Super Grade, how does this compare to the HW80? Well, it's actually, a, well, as we probably would have thought, it's a lot lighter than the HW80 is. You've got quite a bit of uh, flexibility when it comes to what sort of shooters could shoot this. You could probably give this to, with your obviously supervision, give this to a teenager. They would have no problem standing and shooting this thing, whereas the Virarch, they're gonna be all over the place. When it comes to a walked up style of shooting, depending on accuracy and performance, because you never know, this might shoot like a shotgun. You never know, so could the 80. I doubt it because of the reputation, but you never know. Um, when it comes to a walked up style of shooting, I might even recommend this more than the 80 simply for this, because it is, although it's light, it's solid. There's no rattles or anything like that. It does feel like it's gonna last. So let's take a look at the balance now. Now this has got a different scope on top. You'll see this is the Conus, which is a slightly bigger scope, so it'll probably have a bit more maybe on the front end. But I am pleased to report, when you actually look, hang on, let's try and find where is the balance point. It's roughly there, that's it. So if you take a look now where we're holding the gun, the balance on this is every bit as good as the Virarch. It is pretty much dead center. Maybe slightly, compared to the Virarch, slightly further forwards of the trigger guard and trigger unit, but there's no complaints from me there. And I reckon, we give this just a little hold now. The Virarch, don't get me wrong, we could hold that deadly still, but this is, this is the exact same. Um, I personally do like a heavier gun. Um, if you're used to something a bit lighter, you might be able to even, you might probably be able to hold this more still than the Virarch because balance is almost the exact same. And this is a lighter gun out the box anyway. So let's take a look now at the trigger and safety. You can see the safety is engaged here. It is a standard sort of toggle system like you get. This gun uses the Gamo trigger. So if you've shot any of the Gamos in the past or even some of the Benjamins or Crossmans, you will have come across this trigger unit before. It's not the best trigger unit in the world, 
but it's not the worst. It is a solid six out of 10 job going by experience, but you never know, this one could be that freak of nature that is absolutely beautiful. Now, the one thing I always like about these XS19s is you get a really satisfying little click when you return the barrel up that no other gun seems to do. It's just a nice little, I don't know if you could hear that, that click, and that it just feels like a gun that's it's here to do its job. It's not, it's not the prettiest looking thing, but it's not the ugliest, but it's here to do its job, and that's what I like about these little guns. So let's now pop that safety off, and let's have a go with that trigger. Now, like I said, this is the Gamo trigger unit, and this is in its factory um, configuration, so let's give this a little go. Yeah, hopefully you saw that then. There's a bit of a travel, and in its current configuration, it is a little bit on the heavy side. There was also no real second stage I could feel there. Again, I'm sure we could probably adjust that in. It was just sort of like a, a semi-long, semi-heavy pull all the way until off she went. Let's just do that one more time so you can see what I mean. Cocking effort-wise, I'd actually say, despite the longer barrel, this might actually be slightly harder to cock than the HW80, which is interesting, so I don't know what's could be quite nice to uh, that click I love that but it might be quite nice to look at the um, see what the power's doing when we get to the chronograph section because you never know the um, the 80 might actually be slightly down on power compared to this so if you can see now and here's another little thing I want to show you about the gamma unit which you want to be careful of this one might be different though to be fair but you give that a little squeeze but then when you go back the weight is gone what was there before so essentially if you pulled that almost all the way to breaking point like that it's pretty much a hair trigger. It's actually because what I've done where the weight has not resetted like the fire arc would have done, I've actually just made it into a two stage. <laughs> but as soon as we fire it and then go back, you'll see it's back to that same sort of long mushy pull again. So again, if you're pulling the trigger on this, but then you ease off, say the target you was just about to open fire on, or like we say, your prey has moved out the way, just bear in mind that trigger is going to be really light when you get back to it as that weight does not reset. But Overall, the other thing I've got to say about this, which I didn't expect, is that the when it comes to spring twang, with this, it is pretty much non-existent. Hang on, if I just if I shut up for a second and bring it close to you, there's a dear little tonk, but that's about it. And if you can hear that, we're in an echoey barn, so it might be coming out a little bit more than normal. Now, in general, the 19s, I know out of experience, they are sweet to shoot. And We'll talk about recoil when we get to the accuracy testing segment, but I'll tell you what I do like about these, another little feature, and again, it's why it's a brilliant little gun for someone who may be interested in a, a like we said, at some say a teenager might be interested in starting shooting, and why I always recommend them either this or the Remington Pest Controller, is because although cocking effort, there is a little bit there, but not too much, you can return that barrel with just your little finger, and that is just how sweet that lockup is here. I'll show you here. Clink, and that was just a little finger, just returning it back up. Maybe a few guns can do that. The Vire Arc, you wouldn't be able to do that because you've got that sort of stop and then ka-clunk, up it comes. But it is a very sweet little action up there. So when it comes to handling, let's just get rid of this pellet. When it comes to handling, you see there is, there is twang there, but it's still not quite as loud for me. It might be coming out different for you as what the Vire Arc is. Um, when it comes to handling, it's Horses for courses at the moment as to which one I'd choose. The Virarc's got the automatic safety, but if I'm being honest, from my experience shooting, say hunting, I would actually prefer the toggle. Because the safety, it's easy enough to get to, but then even that, having to break that barrel back down again if you want to re-engage it, can be a pain in the ass. Whereas with this, you can literally just live, safe. That's all you need. Trigger-wise, the Virarc, it whoops the gamo unit. Now you can work on these, and the best thing you can actually do with these, which we may have a little play with with some upcoming videos, is the Welsh Willie trigger unit will go on this. It takes about two minutes to fit, and then your trigger is every bit as good as a record, maybe even better depending on how you set it up. So again, but we've got to be fair. As standard configuration, the trigger is not as good as the record unit. We could probably all see that coming. When it comes to cocking effort, again, uh, breaking the barrel, bringing it down, I'm going to give to the Virarc, despite the shorter barrel. But returning will go to the XS19. Like I said, you can do it with your little finger. Twang also goes to the XS19. The Virarc has definitely got a little bit more of that. You can hear it, it's a bit more pronounced. Whereas this has got some twang, but it's nowhere near as loud for me where I'm sitting right now as what the Virarc is. So, 
I'd say it's almost a draw with maybe the edge going to the VAR arc when it comes to the handling section simply because of that trigger and that is a huge part of the gun. But again, it's not as far out as you think because this is, if you're into that, it's lighter. The safety, in my opinion, is better even though it's possibly one of the most, not crude, but simple safeties you can get. When it comes to ease of use, it's going to this. But next up, we've got to put the pair of these through the chronograph. Now, this is pretty much fresh out the box. So what I might do is I might actually just run a few pellets through both guns just to loosen them up a little bit, and then we'll do the chronographing section. I might even get them zeroed in the time we're doing that. We won't put too many pellets through. We won't put probably nowhere near a tin through there, but we're going to put a few through, let the gun loosen up a little bit, so then it's a bit more fresh when we put it through the chrono, because otherwise the Vire arc, I mean, it doesn't need to cheat, if we're being honest, but it will be cheating a little bit because that's probably had a hell of a lot more pellets than what this has been had put through it because it's just come out the box. So let's run a few through both of them so it's extra fair, both have had the same treatment. And then we're going to do a chrono test and shot string test. We'll put 20 shots through the chronograph and see which one comes out the best. So let's put some shots through and let's move on to our chronograph testing. I'll see you in a bit. Okay then, so chronograph time. The chronograph is all prepped and ready, as you can see here, and we've got the stand which is already looking into the camera, so or into the phone, we should say, so you get a live reading each time we fire the gun, so you'll see live results as to what's happening. Pellets we're using today are the Remington, or HN, Field Target Trophy pellets in 2.2, which are 14.66 grain, and as you can see, we've got both rifles prepped and ready here. We're going to use the XS19 Supergrade first to give us a benchmark, and then we'll see if the premium HW80 can top that. So, without further ado, let's get on to chronograph testing. Okay then, so chronograph results, who did best, who did the worst? Well, it was quite surprising actually, especially when you consider that the XS19 is being still run in as we speak. But when it comes to actual consistency wise, it did beat, or by much, but it did actually beat the HW80. Now one thing I'm going to say is pay absolutely zero, no uh, attention, sorry, to the top result you can see there. I've got no idea what that could have been. It, Speedy Gonzalez or something must have jumped through there when I wasn't looking because whatever it was, it was doing 2,375 feet per second. But uh, yeah, I think we can scrub that one off just ever so slightly. Now, looking at the results, on average, the HW80 is definitely more powerful than the XS19, admittedly, at the moment. Um, we had a maximum spread, again, pay no attention to this, we had a maximum spread of 20 feet per second, which isn't too bad, to be honest. Um, the standard deviation, around 20 FPS standard deviation, you're looking around mid five, maybe touching six. Uh, if we now go to the XS19, You'll see here, the power is definitely lower on average. I believe we might have had one or two that came through at about 10.2 feet pounds somewhere. We had two identical shots straight away, and as you can see here, two errors as well. But we had a max spread of 16 FPS, which just pips the HW80, and a standard deviation of 5.2 feet per second. So overall, we do have to, it's a very narrow victory, but we do actually have to give it to our little Chinese wonder, the SMK XS19 Supergrade. We're actually going to do the chronographing with the XS19. We may, if we get time, do it again at the end of the video, because like we said, this is an out-of-the-box gun, unlike the 80, so it's only going to get more consistent the more we shoot it through. So when we've put a few pellets through with the accuracy testing segment, we're then going to do another chronograph test and just see what the difference is. It could be better, it could be worse, but we'll, perhaps we'll see if we can fit it in. So overall, when it comes to the chronograph section, we've got to give it to the XS19, which I did not see that happening. I thought the Virarc spring was going, to be, uh, was going to jump up and down all over the XS19, but they are a tremendous little rifle for the money, the uh, Super Grade. So next up is the bit where we're all expecting the Virarc to jump up and down all over the XS19, and that is the accuracy testing, because at the end of the day, the spread difference between the 19 and the Virarc is next to nothing. You wouldn't feel it when it comes to accuracy, we'll put it that way. But 
we need to put those barrels to the test. So let's set our target up and we'll have a few shots. Again, we'll do it off camera like we have been doing lately to save some time. And I'll find the pellet that works best in the both of them and then we'll put them in a head-to-head -head shot test and see which one comes out on top. So let's have uh, enough of the uh, ranting on and let's actually do some accuracy testing. So you may have noticed we've uh, had to stop a little bit for our 80 shooting session because um, I've left the lapel mic out so you can hear it. The wind has picked up really, really badly. So we will have to bear that in mind for the next few shots that we take. And also, uh, yeah, it did blow the camera off the stand. So uh, we've had to sort of have a little break and then restart again. So, yep, let's get back to it. We're going to get back with the HW80, 25 yards. We're going to have to be careful with the camera though is the only thing. Right then, let's see what the gun can do. Okay then, so accuracy test results. Who's our winner and who's our loser for today? It's a lot closer than what I thought it was going to be, to be honest. So on the left, we had the Virac, that's at our benchmark. Let's take these off and you can see here, granted we had a little bit of a mishap with the wind picked up and uh, it blew the GoPro camera clean off of its uh, stand, but that's 10 shots in a group if it's snugly underneath a five pence piece. That is PCP accuracy there from the HW80. And I think it's pretty easy to see why they become so popular and was pretty much the, or one of the, brake barrels to have back in the day, and I'd even say today. That is a superb group. But the one that I'm actually mainly interested in, because the money that costs, it should be bloody good. The one that I'm mainly interested in is our little XS19. Now what I will say is that the wind was actually somewhat worse when we were shooting the 19 than what it was the HW80. But as you can have a see here, it's not as pretty. We've got two flyers, one high and well, one just high and one high and left. Now if we get our five pence piece, if I can pick it up, oh, fingertips are frozen, there we go. Now, if we plonk that down there, you can see the main cluster still fits under that five pence piece. But again, could be wind, could be the barrel, it could simply be as we said earlier, it does feel like recoil wise there's a deer a little bit more. It could have bounced just that little bit more off my palm, obviously on the, the rifle rest itself, which could have flung them up like that. But it's not bad. I mean, if we put them sort of side by side, if we can, take a look at them like that. It's not as far out as what you'd expect. Um, like we said earlier, the trigger is no way near, because that could be another thing that's throwing the 19 off. The trigger is no way near as refined as the record unit, but then there's not much out there that is, um, in my opinion. But we'll leave it at that and say accuracy wise, well, I'm gonna leave it with you guys and girls watching. Do you think there's, say 300 pounds difference there? That's up for you to decide, but I'm impressed with both either way, that I would not be disappointed if I found either one of those underneath the tree. But that's it for our accuracy testing. Now let's move on to the final verdict and see which one we think is king of the springers. All right then, so our final verdict between our, as we said, Goliath and David shoot off. Which one comes out on top? And is there really the massive price difference and is the price difference worth it between the 80 and the XS19? Well, from a handling perspective, it's a hard one to judge because if you're looking for a gun that's a little bit on the lighter side to take with you with, like we said, walked up style shooting, the XS19 storms ahead. It is a lighter gun, it's easier to carry, and it's slightly uh, cocking, it's hard to judge actually because they're about the same. I'll put it this way, it's not hard to cock at all. Anybody could do it, teenagers could do it. It's a really nice and easy gun to get along with. That being said, 
when it comes to handling there are two big things that are also in the Virarx favour and that is the trigger which is the record unit which uh, with a stupid thing yeah the record unit which is absolutely beautiful I'd argue probably the best trigger or springer out the box springer trigger on the planet right now and it's also got slightly less recoil when it comes to shooting the thing the XS19 doesn't kick terribly in fact it's actually it behaves itself pretty well but you're up against one of the best on the planet here in my opinion which again it's 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 a much more expensive gun you are going to find and again just because of the weight you are going to find it does kick that little bit less the 80 is more of a smooth operator when it comes to looks obviously i mean i like the 19 it's it's a pretty little gun it's a workman's tool when you look at it there's nothing really too fancy on the go but the hw80 it storms ahead but then again it's very much a case of at the money it bloody well should do obviously this is a little extra that the previous owner put on i didn't put that there if you look there's not even a screw hole for the uh screwdriver to adjust, adjust the trigger but that is absolutely you don't have to with these most of the time they are superb now when it comes to performance this is where the 19 was quite surprising because through the chrono the XS19 was actually more consistent than the far more expensive Virarc, which I'm sure that none of us actually expected. Now we chrono test, as we said, each gun that comes in, and to be fair, I have noticed with the 19s that come in, they are a beautifully consistent little gun, and whatever's, the stock might not be much to look at, but whatever's going on on the inside there clearly does its job, because it wasn't much of a victory, but it did beat the 80. Now as we always say, Consistency is great, but it doesn't always translate into accuracy. And this pretty much proved the point. Not by much, but it did prove the point. It also goes to show how much a good trigger does when it comes to accuracy. Now granted, we do have to give the XS19 a little bit of leeway when it comes to the results here, because it was, it was windy with the 80. I'm not going to lie about that but it was windier with the XS19 when we took that out. It was really blowing today. Now, if we take a look, you've got the HW80 here, which is just one solid group, which just sits perfectly under a five pence piece. In fact, I would take that up against most seriously high-end PCPs and, well, it's pretty close. I'll put it that way against some of the ones that we get in. And next up, we had the XS19. Now, it's not as pretty, like we said. You've got two flyers, one high, one high and left. As mentioned, the 19 does kick that little bit more it could be that it could be because the wind was a little bit more harsh I, it was harsh we was picking our shots i don't think it's that the thing that i mainly think it came down to was as we said i think it's the weight because even though we're rested it still bounces slightly off the rest and on top of that i think it's the trigger is the main thing now we did make some minor adjustments to the trigger and it did make it a little bit better but you're never really going to improve that trigger too much just with that little screw it makes a difference but it's not an amazing one i'll put it that way so if we put the five pence piece down as we could see there it's not quite a five pence group uh, you might just if we're lucky if i'm a little cheeky there we go. It's a 20 pence group. You can see there's a little tufty edge coming out the left-hand side there. It's a 20 pence group, which again, 25 yards, granted shooting off of a rest, but in these weather conditions, that's pretty good. You definitely can't fault that little gun for that. It's, I would say in the budget sector, say 150 quid, it's easily one of the most accurate spring guns you can get. And it's reasonably easy to shoot as well. It's an easy thing to get along with. So overall, final verdict, reviewing the HW80 separately, it's beautiful. It really is. It is a seriously well-made bit of kit. It shoots wonderfully. It twangs a little bit, but uh, to be fair, there's only a couple of the Walthers I've shot that didn't really twang all that much at all. Um, and a couple of the Remingtons that I've tested, like the Sabres, they're pretty quiet. But again, spring a twang in. To me, some people it puts them off, but to me, that's part of the fun of owning a spring gun. Overall, the HW80 is stunning. If you want a high-end springer, don't discount it. Yeah, the 80's been out for a while, but even so, it is a beautiful, beautiful gun. And shoulder one and have a play with one before you make your mind up. Because, if well, if we're going money, no object, object spring gun, this could be the one that I'd go for. The XS19 reviewed separately. Again, it's a budget gun. You expect there's going to be corners cut somewhere. Like we said, the stock, while nicely figured, and maybe with a bit of oil, it might come out, out quite nice, the stock is a little bit on the bland side. Um, the Remington Pest Controller, which is essentially the exact same gun, you do get a shroud on the end, and you do get some checkering sort of on the gun. It's nothing too deep or anything like that, but it just gives it a little bit more extra finish. Action and such is the exact same. 
The XS19, in my opinion, with the pest controller, is one of the greatest budget guns that you can buy. You can pick them up cheap, and even second hand, you can have a look around, you can f find a few. Granted, you don't know what they've been through, as with all second hand guns, but you can find a few for around 60 quid on free ads, things like that, if you're in the UK. They're definitely worth a buy. They really are. They're a lovely, lovely little gun. And as you can see, performance wise, I wouldn't call it, as we said, you're looking around 400 pounds for one of these. You're not gonna see that much difference or for, let's say 200 quids worth of difference 350 quids worth of difference between the pair of them so a 250 sorry like i said i've got so many things going around in my head my math's failing me today a 250 pounds difference i wouldn't say that there but again it's down to you in the face off it's got to go to the virac it has to it's not one every category but it's one most most but what i'm going to say is because of the price difference there's another saying that I've been wanting to test that goes around in the air gun world. And that is one, like they say, you'll never find a budget gun that shoots as good as an expensive one, which we talked about earlier. The other one is about tuning. And a lot of people will say, don't bother tuning a budget gun because again, it'll never shoot as well as an expensive gun. I think we should put that to the test. I think this little XS19 has, has performed so well today and these past couple of days we've been reviewing that I think this deserves to have some money spent on it. Now we're going to play this completely fair. I'm going to price the gun up at its max SRP price. The little bits and bobs we get, we're going to get in a Welsh Willy trigger unit to go on here like we did with the uh, Air Cobra that we reviewed. We're going to put the maximum price on and we're going to run a tally up. And we're going to see if we can, how little we have to spend to make this gun perform and feel every bit as good as that one. Now granted, I don't think the stock's ever gonna be <laughs> ever gonna be quite like that, but we'll see how close we can get, I'll put it that way. So that could be a good bit of fun, have another little series running where uh, we'll uh, get that done, add little bits, and then give them another head-to-head -head and see exactly how they compare. So that's it for this episode of Big Dad's Air Gun Reviews. And Christmas is literally around the corner. It's the 23rd as I'm filming this today. And you probably, you may not hear from me until after Christmas or potentially into the new year and everyone that's watching I wish you the greatest Christmas you could possibly have and also the best new year that you could ever possibly imagine and thank everyone I'd like to thank everyone so much for sticking with us all this time through the uh, slightly more basic earlier reviews to the things where we do a bit more go a bit more in depth these days so thank you ever so much we wouldn't be doing this channel if it weren't for you guys watching and for the support anyways that's enough of that uh, soft gushiness over I wish you all the merriest Christmas you can have, and take care.